Hi, welcome to the experience. We're so glad that you've decided to join us tonight. If you'd go ahead and like and subscribe before we get started, we would really appreciate the support and then you will not miss out on a future episode of the experience. Tonight, we will have a message from Pastor Kimberly about change. Is change a good thing? Are we okay with change? How do we cope with change? Is change sometimes necessary? Pastor Kimberly will be answering some of those questions tonight. So go ahead and enjoy that message. After the message, there will be a few discussion questions and you can either join the discussion group that's linked in the description box and share your responses over there, or you can just mull over them, take them into your weekend, do some personal reflections and keep your responses to yourself. Please enjoy Pastor Kimberly's message and I will see you afterwards. Here I am standing in the, uh, the hay mow in Hay Mound, or depending on who you're talking to, it's said a couple of different ways, in this old barn. And, and you can see up in the, the sky, up in the ceiling behind me, I guess not really sky, up in the ceiling behind me, an old bale fork. And I guess I really want to talk with you a little bit this episode about change. Change. Some of us really love change, and we, we grab on to change. We embrace change. Some of us, I guess myself included, depending on what the topic is, is not always so fond of change. Sometimes I really love change. I think change has a purpose and has a place in this world. Um, but I also think sometimes we change just for the sake of changing and that can be bad as well. But when this barn was built, it of course did not have a metal roof that you would see above me now, but it does now. We replaced it with a metal roof, I don't know, probably 30 years ago. Um, but that old fork that you see would actually scoop down to the loose hay that would have come into from the wagons, from the field, the fields, they would have harvested the hay and loose hay, they would have pulled up to the outside and that fork operated by ropes and men would have scooped down and picked up the loose hay and then brought it in and stacked it into where I'm standing now. And um, it would eventually with pitchforks been thrown down to the animals below. I don't remember a time when that fork was ever really used other than my brother and I, when we were kids, even though we were told not to, would run across the big beams that you can see behind me and we would climb and we would play and we would play with that fork even though we were told not to. But that's what kids do that are raised and grow up on a farm is you you explore and, and we would make this our farm area up here. and. We had a great time doing it, years of entertainment, hours and hours of entertainment. When my daughter Paige was um, younger, when she was about um, nine or 10 or so, I don't remember exactly, but she was jumping up in this hay mow just as my brother and I would used to when we were kids. She actually jumped between two bales and broke her ankle. And so over the years, this barn has seen a lot, a lot of um, change that has come to it. It has been painted red on the outside, but you can tell on the inside, it still has the old weathered boards. There's still holes. You can see the light coming in um, some of the walls behind me and so forth. And it has seen a lot. It's one of those things that if these walls could talk, what would these walls say? And so as we talk about change and we talk about, as you can tell from, from the, the little clips that we've edited in here, that there's now square bales of hay and straw that are stacked in this barn, no longer loose hay. And they're brought in by the hay elevator off of a wagon and we're stacked here. And then we throw them down the steps to the horses or we load them up and take them out to the sheep or to the cattle or wherever they need to be used. We put them on the trailer and we haul them to horse shows with us. We take them to the county fair. We take them to the state fair. Square bales of hay are so much more um, easily used and are so much more adaptable to our circumstances today than what that loose hay um, was that we used so many years ago. So that's a really, I think, a good example of how change can be beneficial and how change can be good. But people, sometimes we change. And as we grow and as we mature from, from infants and toddlers into preschoolers and kindergartners and elementary kids and high schoolers and college students into adult life, we go through a bazillion different changes in our bodies, our thinking process, our relationships. Um, we just, we go through a lot of changes. And again, those changes can be very good. 
However, I would question, or at least challenge you to question, are all changes good? Sometimes we get caught up with the wrong people, the wrong crowds, or we listen to the wrong sources, whether it be news media, social media, um, the tabloids that you check out at a grocery store, whatever it is. Sometimes we listen to sources that tell us to change in bad ways, tell us to change into people that we are not or were not created to be. You know, we, over the years, we've seen so many people that just go astray because they've listened to the wrong voice. They've listened to the wrong sources of information. They change for the wrong reasons. And so I would ask you today, um, what changes have you gone through in your life? What changes have you gone through in your life? Probably most recently would be the ones to think about the most. But what has been the driving force behind those changes? You know, are you changing jobs because you need to make more money for your family? Okay. Or are you completely changing maybe the crowd that you're hanging out with just because somebody um, told you to or somebody's encouraged you to or you've made friends with somebody that maybe isn't the greatest influence? And how is that change maybe taking you in a direction that you shouldn't be going? Maybe it's, it's uh, pulling you away from who you were really created to be into something you were not created to be. And so over the next few days, as we enter into this, um, this weekend, I would just encourage you to think about that change. There's a lot of examples where people have become, you know, they were really good students in school, but they dropped out because they got connected with the wrong crowd. Or marriages have crumbled because one of the couples, one of the, the partners in the, the relationship, the husband or the wife, um, started listening to the wrong crowd. And so relationships, you know, people say, well, you know, you can do what you want to do. You don't have to listen to your husband. You don't have to listen to your wife. You don't have to listen to your partner. You can do whatever you want to do. But the reality is, is we need to respect each other. And so those kinds of changes without conversation can often pull us astray. Now, God changes us. When, when Jesus gets a hold of us and comes into our heart, absolutely change happens. And that can be great change. It's marvelous change. But again, it's being led in the right direction versus the wrong direction. The speed of change, I think, also um, plays an important role. The changes that happened in this barn did not happen overnight. It was probably a mixture of square bales and, and some loose hay for a short period of time. The square bales didn't look anything like they look today. They weren't as tight. They weren't, um, they weren't as stacked as neatly. There was a lot of change. I remember as a kid having to climb up on the stacks and stacks of hay and put down salt because it kept it from rotting and kept it from getting too hot and kept things from catching on fire. We don't do that anymore. We don't do that anymore. That's a change. And honestly, I think that's a good change because it saves me a lot of time and work. But it's a change. But it's also a change that's happened over time and over generations. So change can be good. And so I would encourage you that as you think about the changes that have taken place in your life, are they changes that are being led by a good, a good source or are they changes that are just being are just being pulling you in directions that are taking you in maybe ways that that are causing some harm in your life or in the relationships that you're in? So I would encourage you this week just to ponder the change. And then maybe what change do you need to make that's coming in the future? Is God calling you to change in a way that maybe you haven't quite thought of? Maybe you're not prepared for it. Maybe you're resistant a little bit to that change. What does that change look like and how do you respond to that change as well? And who do you have around you that can provide you with wise counsel so that when a change is coming or when you estimate that a change is going to be coming or you're thinking that a change is needed, you have somebody to talk over that with, to pray with over that situation. So I would just, again, encourage you this week to think about the changes you have made the changes that you need to make, the changes that you want to make, and what is the driving force behind those changes? Are they taking you someplace good and constructive? Or are they pulling you away from you, the you that you have been created to be? There's a peace far beyond our understanding. Thank you again for joining us today. We're so glad that you were 
here with us tonight. Don't forget to join the discussion group linked in the description box. Go ahead and like and subscribe and we'll put those discussion questions up once again so you can think about them and reflect on them over the weekend. Thank you again and God bless.